I do want to wrap with one pseudo big story, and that is that we have our first movement on the college football coaching carousel. That is right. There is a shakeup at UConn as Randy Edsel. Uh, first of all, remember, Randy Edsel, uh, I, I yelled and screamed about this last week. But Randy Edsel, UConn, UConn doesn't play last year. They come back in week zero. They play at Fresno State. They lose 45 nothing. I promised you it was the last time I was going to talk about UConn football. I only talked about UConn football because of the fact that uh, the only reason I talked about UConn football was because of the fact that there was no other games in week zero worth discussing. I wasn't going to talk about them again, but then a couple things. One, they lost to Holy Cross, an FCS team, on Saturday. And let me be clear, Holy Cross isn't even a top 25 team in the FCS, and UConn lost to them. And two, on top of that, if you watch the game, and I was probably the only one watching it, um, you know, UConn athletically, size-wise, skill-wise, looked no better than Holy Cross. Like, from an athleticism, size, strength standpoint, uh, Holy Cross, the FCS team, looked about the same as UConn, and that was when he kind of realized, okay, this is not sustainable. This is not going to work. Something has to change, and I tweeted it. I tweeted as much. Uh, Randy Etzel's got to go. I don't care how it happens. I don't care how it goes down. This guy is not the long-term answer at UConn, and apparently my, my prayers were answered as on Sunday it was announced that Randy Etzel would retire at the end of this season, and it appeared as though very much that it was a forced retirement because it's worth noting I, I had not seen Randy Etzel's name, UConn, in any of the preseason hot seat lists. It seemed like he was going to get through this year into next year when uh, you know his contract became a little bit different. There was no indication that he wanted to retire, so you kind of wondered right away, one, is this a forced retirement? And then two, on top of that, um, you know, uh, what, what, the, what the dynamics behind it were. And then we find out on Monday that, oh, by the way, it's not now a retirement. Randy Edsel is quitting effective immediately. And so with Randy Edsel, I think there's a few things to say. One, he was at UConn a while ago, and he was really great for that program. I don't ever want to take away what he did in his first time around. I don't ever want to take away the fact that he built the program from an FCS program to an FBS program. I don't want to take away the fact that, um, you know, that, that the program was on really stable ground when he left. As I said the other day, four straight bowl games to end his first tenure, including a Fiesta Bowl, obviously the high of UConn football in basically the history of the program. But it's also worth noting that he left under really crappy circumstances the first time. If you'll remember, uh, he they win the bowl game, and essentially that night he flew out to Maryland to accept the Maryland coaching job when Ralph Friedgen left. Uh, it's worth noting for the UConn diehards, you'll remember this, they had an NFL running back named Jordan Todman who was declaring for the draft. Randy Edsel makes him get up in front of the team and tell the team that he is leaving, that it is final game. And then Randy Edsel sneaks out the side door and takes the Maryland job. And so he left under lousy circumstances the first time. And I'll say this again. He left under even worse circumstances the second time. This is embarrassing and this is inexcusable. And let me explain why. As I said a minute ago, Randy Edsel, last year, UConn was one of only two programs that played zero college football at the FBS level, okay? Old Dominion was the only one that didn't play a single game. Uh, New Mexico State didn't play in the fall, but they got some games in, in the spring against FCS teams. And you know who was in charge? You know who spearheaded the idea that UConn football shouldn't play? Randy Edsel. And you know who was the person who said publicly that, oh, these guys need another year to get bigger, stronger, faster? Randy Edsel. Well, one, on top of the fact that the on-the-field product was embarrassing, Two, shame on Randy Edsel, because after he left the program, the way that he did the first time, you know what he just did again? He just hijacked another, he just hijacked two seasons away from the current players on his roster, okay? Because just think about what Randy Edsel did to his players. One year ago, he doesn't fight for them. He doesn't say he wants to play. Last year, you can criticize a lot of coaches for a lot of things, but Scott Frost was out there saying, I want to play. Nebraska wants to play. Jim Harbaugh said, Michigan football will be ready to play in two weeks if you're ready. Brian Harson, one of the big reasons why he left Boise for Auburn, besides the fact that it, it's a better job, it's in the SEC, he felt like Boise did not go to bat enough to play last season. All these coaches wanted to play. Randy Edsel bails on the season, says it's for the players. Then this year, bails on the exact same players. 
as he retires. I think it's unacceptable. I think it's totally inexcusable. You only get four to five years to play college football. This guy just hijacked two seasons from these kids because last year they didn't play, and this year he's quitting on them in two games in. So if you if you want to retire at the end of the year, that's fine. If you don't think you're good enough or if the AD doesn't think you're good enough, you get fired. But to quit and walk out right now is embarrassing. I'm over Randy Edsel. Now with that said, let's get into UConn football program because a lot of, I've, I've heard two things. UConn stinks. They should move to FCS. They'll never be the same. What I'll say is this. First of all, they're not moving to the FCS, okay? Studies have been done. I talked about this when UConn went to the Big East two years ago, but studies have been done. And the money that you will lose in donations ends up being much greater than the money that you spend on FBS football, even as an independent. Studies have been done. It's a fact. It's indisputable. Two, UConn has actually been able to schedule pretty decently. They got Purdue coming to town this weekend, which is not a marquee game, but it's a Big Ten opponent coming to UConn this weekend. I would also say you get that one big road game a year, Clemson, Ohio State, Michigan, whomever, that pays a lot of bills in the athletic department, and so they're not going to the FCS level because you're going to lose a bunch of money, and you're going to lose those big money out-of-conference games with the Ohio State's Clemson, which they play later this year, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, whoever. Uh, those are all games that you're going to lose if you go to the FCS level. So UConn will be staying at the FBS level. And then two, on top of that, what I would also say is this. I hear a lot of people say, oh, it's a terrible program. It'll never... Okay, I get it. UConn football will probably never go to a quote-unquote BCS bowl game, a New Year's Six bowl game ever again. I accept that. So do most UConn fans. At the same time, you cannot tell me that there is not a coach out there that can get them to 6-6 six and six in any given year with respectability and get to a mediocre bowl game. And UConn fans, I believe, are realistic, okay? UConn fans are not asking for 9-3. and three. UConn fans are not asking for 10-2. and two. UConn fans are not asking to go to Clemson and complete with, compete with Clemson. But can you get us to six wins and get us to a bowl game? I believe it can happen. I believe there are enough dynamic young head coaches out there that just want an opportunity. A um, lot of great play callers. It's ironic that I, I brought up Liam Cohen, the Kentucky play caller, uh, because he is from the New England area, and Bruce Feldman listed him as a potential candidate. I don't think he's going to go to UConn. I think he's an SEC coordinator. He's going to probably get paid better, and he's going to wait for a better opportunity. But it doesn't change the fact that somebody is out there, whether it is some kind of offensive play caller, some kind of assistant coach, coordinator at the Power 5 level, or an FCS coach looking to break in at the FBS level. UConn is still a, a state school with state funding, 40,000-seat stadium. And I'm just telling you, I know it's an independent, but I'm telling you, it is not anywhere close to the worst job in Power 5 football or in, in, in FBS football, okay? How many MAC schools can get Big Ten, ACC, uh, uh, you know, Big Ten, ACC, Big 12 schools into their home stadium? Well, UConn's doing it. They had Indiana a few years ago. They got Purdue this year. They got North Carolina coming to town a few. UConn is getting good home games relative to the competition, and you just got to go 6-6. Six and six. You just got to go to a bowl game, and you can do it. And so I think in this era, with the one-time transfer rule, with the transfer portal era, that's the other factor too. You can upgrade your roster really quickly. It's funny, I was talking to a Tennessee fan over the weekend, and we were talking about how I think the reason Josh Heupel can have success is is because I think he's going to be able to get a lot of skill position guys to Tennessee because playing time is available. And so if you get the right coach, young, dynamic, uh, offensively uh, inclined, and then you go hit that portal where there's a bunch of kids that just want the opportunity to play, I'm telling you, UConn can turn around from probably the, the least talented roster in F FBS football to at the very least respectable and maybe 6-6. Six and six. So Randy Edsel, it was time to go. He left the program in an embarrassing fashion for the second straight time. I'm appreciative of what he did previously, but it was time for him to head out.